Okay, um, this is the first part of my potato experiment for this year. Um, unfortunately, I forgot to uh, record the first part, so uh, you haven't got, got all the chitting and bits and pieces like that, but there are about a thousand videos of that already on YouTube this year. Um, what I'm doing this year is uh, 10 rows, 10 buckets of Sarpos, main crop, 10 buckets of Swift, uh, first earlies, and five buckets each of Carlingford and then Charlotte for second earlies. And I'll be planting those um, on the 1st of February, which has happened for these guys, 1st of April, 1st of June, and 1st of August. Um, just as an experiment to see how long I can extend the potato season this year. As and when I come to do the harvests, um, I'll record those and I'll, I'll uh, put them up as individual videos and I'll cut them into a longer one for you so you can see the, the results more easily. In addition, um, the first and the last batches, so the ones in February, these ones, and the ones done in August, will be done in buckets, and the other two will be going into no-dig beds that I've prepared this year. Um, I call them no-dig beds, uh, but they are some dig. <laughs> um, they're going into virgin soil that hasn't been worked for many, many years, so all I will have done is turned the sod, um, covered them with cardboard, and piled uh, compost on top. Uh, just a commercially prepared one that I get from the local um, uh, sort of recycler type type people that, that just take green waste in. Um, so that that's the plan for this year. This is the first of the videos showing them in, and I'll um, take more as as they they grow and get bigger and cut them into something usable. Cheers. Right, guys, I just thought I'd show you uh, the train on the, the plot that I'm trying to deal with. As you can see, absolutely full of all kinds of perennial and annual weeds. Um, the plot was going to have the second and third sets of potatoes, so the ones planted now for the first week of April and the first week of June are going to be in these beds, which are all I've done is I've mowed it short. It's not going to be quite no dig, I'm just going to skin the tops off as I have done here, so just take the, the turbs off the top. Um, I'll then uh, backfill with compost to create ridged mounds when I put them in, and I'll, I'll show that to you in a separate video. But just so you'd like to see, this is the uh, basis of what it started from. Right, just another quick update. Um, as you can see, following on from the other day, I haven't got around skimming those because the weather is frankly been foul. It's raining right now as I speak. Um, however, um, I've come down the first bed which I managed to skim. I've now got the planting holes. The plan for this is to use a planting hole, a little bit of blood fish and bone, a little bit of potato fertiliser in the bottom, a little bit of compost and then put spud in and uh, top up the bed with, uh, heal it up with compost. Um, this bed has got offset rows, it's 20 tubers. I didn't realise I'd set quite so many, otherwise I would have done two rows probably, but uh, with the weather the way it is, and the need to get them in, um, which I'll explain in a moment. Um, now I um, chip my potatoes slightly differently to most people. I use a hybrid version of the HGV homegrown veg version which I'll pop a link in the description below for. Um, he plants his in um, uh, uh, yogurt pots in order to get, get them off to an early start and that's what I do every month except that I put mine in a tray with a little bit of soil in the bottom so they've got something to root into but nothing on top. So I did that a month ago and um, in an unheated uh, shed and uh, they've got to be away with me so I've got to get them in the ground now uh, I don't have any choice these have got to go in so um, these are first early these are swift I'll get these in hopefully if the weather dries up later in the week I'll get my uh, second early's my main crops in for this run um, but yeah they're uh, they're not quite as bad as this but these guys have got to go in today come uh, hell or high water with high water being the operative word um, I'll bring you back when I do the others uh, and to show you what the the end product looks like Okay, as promised, uh, all three sets of potatoes are in. So first bed is that one there. First early is Swift. That bed is second early with Carlingford. And that bed is King Edward's main crop and Desiree main crop, half and half. Um, all I've done is I've skimmed the top, uh, using a bowl planter, dug some holes, put some... Um, potato fertiliser and some blood fish and bone in the bottom, handful of compost, slap the massively over chitted potatoes into the hole and earth up. Now this is fresh compost, this is fresh, 
It's been allowed to, to weather in the sun and, and rain for about two weeks already, so it's sunk about a third from its original height in terms of the compost pile. But I'm expecting this these these hills to sink by about a third again um, uh, over the next sort of four to six weeks. As that happens, I'll earth them up again to about this same height. That's that's the sort of final height that I want them to be at. Um, you see plenty of videos on YouTube where people have this wonderfully tilted soil and um, everything's uh, pristine and you know, they cut back afterwards saying, oh yes, yes, half an hour later, look, I've done all this wonderful work. Make no mistake, this, which is the back half of my plot, hasn't been worked in 15 years. Uh, this ground was a solid mat of weeds and brambles and grass. Um, and you can still see parts of it poking out from underneath the weed membrane, which will, I'm um, hoping, get shaded out by the potatoes. But doing this, just, just those three hills, was hours of backbreaking labour. So don't don't be under any full solutions that, that if you're taking on a plot like this, it's going to be hard work, even if you're just doing potatoes. Um, if, even if I'd rotivated this whole section, which the op opposite was what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do no dig. If I'd rotivated it, I'd had to have turned it by hand before I could hit the rotorator anyway, and it would have been just as difficult. So make no illusions, it's not easy. Um, I will bring you back tomorrow when I move the uh, first planting uh, of potato pots out of the polytunnel and into the into the sunshine. Uh, I'm not going to do it tonight uh, today because tonight we've got a very hard minus three frost, probably the last proper um, frost of the year. Um, so I want them want tucked up in the polytunnel for, for that. Um, but yeah, come tomorrow, they'll come out and I'll show you that and then I'll, I'll post this as uh, all cut together as the first, first part of the... Okay, and everybody is now outside. Now, as you can see, we had minus three uh, degree temperatures last night, and even inside the polytunnel, they've been knocked back a bit. Um, don't worry, they will recover. That's what's to be expected of the potatoes that you put in as early as these ones in February. Uh, I will be covering these with a double layer of fleece, which I've picked out, uh, and that fleece will stay on and will not be touched until it's uh, well past the uh, risk of last frost, probably the second week of uh, May. Our last frost is usually the 20th of April. Um, but I'll leave that on a little bit longer just to make sure they don't get checked a second time because that really will stop their growth. Um, if it does end up killing off a pot or three, there's no great shakes because these were my uh, shot to nothing potatoes. These were the, the first ones and, and it was expected. Um, I'll just come back with a quick clip in a second with them all tucked in under their fleece. Okay, and there we go. All tucked into bed and yeah, that won't come off for about three or four weeks now um, and we'll see how they get on. Um, 